Kevin, teach us and dedicate this year. Okay. Dedications to all the soldiers fighting for protect, protecting Klai Israel, Am Israel, and Medina Israel. May they may they be successful in their missions, mission in destroying the enemy, obliterating the enemy, and return safely and also assist in, the, in bringing back the hostages. Amen. Okay. So these last few weeks in the in the, the, in the parashiyot have had relevance to the to the current situation, especially with the war going on. And I read, I went through this week's parashah, the next week's parashah, Vayishlach. And um, one thing about Vayishlach, I'm just going to, I don't want to take too much time, is uh, it talks about when Yaakov had to meet Esav and he prepares for uh, the worst, but he does his history. Look, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm talking about after they go their separate ways, um, uh, Yaakov and family all settle in a place near Shechem, near where the where where Shechem, where the the tribe of not Shechem, the uh, what's the land called? Um, sorry, one sec. They settled in uh, near the people of where were the where 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 the where the where Shechem and his family Hamur. I don't I can't I, I don't see them. It doesn't. It's not important. So anyway, so they. Uh, Shrem abducts Dina and he rapes her. And then he wants to marry her. And then Yaakov is very upset about it. And uh, the Reuven and uh, Shimon are not impressed. So Shimon and Levi, and they, uh, uh, they, they go in to execute all of the, 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 the that tribe, every male, because they say every man was responsible. Even though it was only done, only the, the rape was committed by one person. And we know the story, but then I see something very interesting here that says the, every male was killed. Since the citizens didn't penalize him for his crime, they were considered accomplices. Furthermore, the people of Shem were planning to attack the Jew Jacob and plunder him. Besides this, the city uh, deserved divine punishment since they were notorious for seducing and raping the daughters of strangers. So I never knew that. I never knew that part of the story. I'm, I'm learning from the living there. From, from another Humash. So they were vindicated, even though Yaakov wasn't happy. But then Yaakov did nothing to them. I mean, they just, he didn't give them a great blessing at the end of his days. But um, what they did was, was the right thing at the end of the day. And um, please God, it reflects uh, the current situation that these enemies, the people that perpetu perpetuated evil against us, even though even the ones that aren't and support it, will get taken out and and, and eliminated. Sure. Amen. Amen. So, well, it's, so hopefully it very has much, very much in line with what's going on now. Hey, well done. Though. Yeah. Wow. Well, um. Um. All right. Um, thanks, Kevin. Thank you very, very much. Well, wow, that was good. Um, all right. Um, guys, I'll tell you where we left off last time. We were talking about an opinion of Rebbe. So what we ended up with is in the 14th, 114th stuff before we, we finished off on Aleph and then we hit Bet. But it says one of the alternative answers about how rubber can hold that just a declaration of despair is not necessarily indicative of internal feelings of despair with his uh, regards to his argument with the buyer. We are saying that there is an alternative answer that if you look, the ton of this Brysa is Rebbe. And it was taught in a Brysa, Rebbe says a thief is like a robber. So what does this mean is that uh, if you looked at the original source with Kalim, with this 26 Duff and the uh, eighth subsection of that, it was talking about the acceptance um, of the victim that he declared a state of despair, Yush, and therefore the thief or the robber uh, now owns the heart, and therefore if the heart just requires mental thought to turn it into a mat, and it doesn't require further processing. At that stage, it's de it's determined through thought that it becomes a clear vessel. And then if it's 
infected with the tumor, it, uh, the susceptibility sticks simply because the thief or the robber has the ownership because of the victim's despair. Okay. And therefore, we were saying, but if you want to go according to uh, rubber, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. What's the problem? Is that either it's not going to uh, accord with the proposition by the Tanakama stating that as far as the uh, uh, the issue in Kalim is concerned, that as far as robbers are concerned, um, the um, there isn't Yush on the part of the victim because if he knows somebody robbed him and it was a guy on a pub that robbed him of his laptop, he knows the guy had a couple of drinks. He's not particularly dangerous, just a bit physically overpowering. He's drunk and doesn't take no for an answer. Then the victim will sue him in court. He hasn't given up hope or despair of recovering his article because he's got legal uh, uh, mechanisms with which to claim. But as far as the thief is concerned, that tunnels in his home, he doesn't know the identity, so he's despaired of recovering his item. As far as Rabbi Shimon is concerned, that is the opposite way around. As far as a thief is concerned, he has three people over for dinner. The Fabergé egg goes missing, and one of the three is guilty, and therefore he'll eventually come to discover through cross-testimony of witnesses who the thief is that was uh, took the opportunity in his home to steal the Fabergé egg. And therefore, there's no despair, and he's going to recover it. But if somebody's part of the mafia and witnesses go missing, etc., he's not scared at all. And therefore, even if he knows the identity of the robber, he's not going to take him to court because this robber is part of the mafia and is above the law, and therefore despair occurs in the case of the robber. So what happened was, take this case of Uber, the declaration of despair suffices, and Rabbah says not. We say, well, Ula accords with the uh, Mishnah on the 114th stuff that if the customs or tax collector gives you an inferior doctor, uh, donkey for a superior donkey, you can keep the inferior donkey because there's your ush on the part of the victim because he's not going to get the money back from the tax collector. And therefore, you can, in principle, legally keep the inferior donkey because you're not stealing it. Your ush has taken place. Uh, Rashi says it's repugnant to uh, and the Rashash to keep it under such circumstances, but legally you can. And as far as a troop of bandits, I use the term troop to describe the ANC, um, is concerned, but the troop also has a connotation of a guerrilla. But that aside, we said a troop of bandits That's and what? bandits are robbers. So therefore, Robbers, there's also despair that if I use the term, if robbers give you an inferior garment and they take your superior garment, you can accept it because the victim at which they originally took an inferior garment from the other victim is had Jewish, and therefore you can keep the inferior uh, um, garment when they take your superior one because the original victim gave up. So what happens is when you're dealing with this case of robber, they're questioning him against our Mishnah and say, look, in either case, we see that Yush has taken place. So therefore, if a person declares that they've given up, they've given up. Otherwise, why would our Mishnah say in the case of a customs collector, uh, which is a, uh, a robber, because he does it in broad daylight and takes your item, compared to a bandit which stealthily goes at night with a group of thieves, either way, Despair has taken place, and that's why you can inf uh, accept the inferior garment for the superior one they take from you. Then obviously your ush has taken place. If your ush has taken place, under one circumstance can it take place? It can take place only with despair. So if somebody says they've despaired, they've despaired. And this now seems to be a contradiction against rubber. Uh, so what happens is it either works uh, with the opinion of the Tanakam or Rabbi Shimon or doesn't work with the Tanakam and doesn't work with Rabbi Shimon. So we've seen this cross-sectioning backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards about partial answers, et cetera, et cetera. And basically the Gemara says, look, you can make it work with both options because you can have what you call different kinds of robbers. And that would be the opinion 
that despair takes place with different kinds of robbers, according to Rabbi Shimon's opinion. Because according to the Tanakhama, the rabbi they said, you don't have to worry about a rabbi, a robber, because you know his identity. And therefore you can sue. According to Rabbi Shimon, listen, this is not an ordinary robber. This is a guy you should be scared of, and therefore you're not going to sue. So you despair of getting your things back. So what two different types of robbers? Well, we said there's the uh, the kind that is armed and the kind that is a tax collector that has almost the sanction to steal from you and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. Okay. And then we dealt with this issue with rubber where there was a, another challenge, if you remember correctly, that we said, look, you've got a case of a thief, a robber, and an expropriator. What's an expropriator? Is an expropriator is you might be given money for the item that you hand over, but either it's not the amount that you expect, in other words, it's a paltry amount, but the person is very, very well protected, and therefore you kind of forced into it. So he might give you money and say, I paid for it, but he certainly didn't pay a uh, top dollar or the amount that it's worth. Or well, secondary, you have in a secondary case. You have a case when an expropriator is known to take your item by force and pay you for it the market related fee, but you didn't want to sell it. So let me put it to you like this. We used that analogy the other day. You have a house uh, before they built Santon City. At first, they hardly give you anything for it. You hold a, you hold out and you say it's worth more. And eventually, they give you intimidatory tactics. They give you uh, legal cases against you. That you're tied up in court. You being followed all the time. They're basically bullying you in order to sell your property so you can build a shop. They can build a shopping center. So that's known as expropriation. They might pay you for it, but if you don't sell it, one could lose their life. One could be tied up in court for 10 years and go broke defending the uh, damages action and a myriad of things. So it's sale by force. But either way, they're all categorized in the same way. What does a thief, a robber, and an expropriate uh, have in common? It's very simple. Something is taken against your will. So even if they pay you for it, if you're not consenting to the sale, it's against your will. You get what I'm saying, Gavin? Yeah. Okay, so your eyes look like they're closing. It might just be the reflection. No, it's a reflection. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm 100 with you. Okay, so what what we're saying is the Gemara says that which they consecrate is consecrated, that which they designate as teruma is teruma, and that which they designate as nicer is nicer. We say you can't consecrate, designate as teruma, or give us nicer that which is not yours. So evidently if they're saying a thief, a robber or an expropriator gives these things over can't give that which he steals so how is that even possible? And then the Bryce refers to the fact that the only way that's possible is if there's a transfer of ownership and that can occur when the original owner despairs of recovering the stolen goods and it holds that despair effects acquisition. That's according to the opinion of the Tanakama of this particular Mishnah. Other Mishnahs that we've learned in Baba Kama say that despair has to obviously coincide with what other factors are there. It could be either of, uh, of the following factors. What are they? The three factors. You mean for your Ush or what? For your Ush, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, why uh, for your shoes? Uh, hold on a second now. Why is it singing? Hold on, Danny, don't speak now. Um, the one is okay for well, for, for your shoes, like despair. That's basically what yes, it is. Yes, so but you... this mission okay. says, hang, hang on one second, mm -hmm. this mission says despair alone suffices because that's why oh. a tax collector can. Uh, can give you an inferior Ford Escort and take your Porsche, because despair has already taken place on behalf of the victim. But other missioners have said your Ush has to work in conjunction with certain other factors. Could be any of those factors. There are three. What are they? Um, um, 
blank at the moment. I'm just everything's going on in the house at the moment. So I'm trying to no, listen no, to no, this no, kind of stuff okay. with the family. Kevin, uh, Gavin, any answers? I get it, mate. It's not an issue. No, I'm not, but I answered it last time. I know the answer. I can do it again. But Kevin, you want to try? Otherwise, I'll do it. I've got very noisy background here. So what what are the other you said there are three conditions what is, what, for your uh, ush? No, no, no. I said your ush has to work in conjunction with one of the other conditions. There are three possible options. You can name anything. In order to transfer ownership, basically oh, is one of them. What? If it's, if, if it's changed, no, that's yes, that's, yes absolutely. Yes, that's one of them. Um the other one would also be I like it was and I, I, I my mind's I don't change one yeah. of them. The other one would be um if if you don't know the identity of the person or the, if, if it's a guy tunnel to house and stole it, the other one that's the no, second no, no, one. No, 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 no. Change no. was correct. Okay. There's two, oh. there's okay. two aspects of change. The one is a change of domain. The other okay. aspect is a physical change to the properties of the stolen item. Okay. Okay, so that's why when we say if a thief steals an item and sells or slaughter it, that's when the penalties of the four fivefold come in with regards to uh, an ox or a sheep. Because there's a physical change. The animal's alive, it's dead. It's now been sold. It's gone from one domain to another, and money's changed hands. So money, a financial transaction, also enables it to go to the third party um, from, the, um, from the thief to the new buyer. Okay, so we're saying that let's just go according to our Mishnah, where despair effects acquisition on its own. So we, the Gemara is asking, who's the ton of this price who assumes that the owner has despaired in the case of both the robber and the thief? If you say it's the robbers, guys, if you say it's a case, mm -hmm. um, okay, let me put it like this. If you go according to the Tanakama, who just who assumes despair only in the case of a thief, then the Bryce's assumption that a victim of a robber has despaired is problematic. And if you want to say, guys, it's according to Rabbi Shimon, who assumes despair only in the case of a robber, because the guy's a mafia guy, then the Bryce's assumption that a victim of a thief has despaired is problematic. So we're saying, either way, if we learn this Bryce, how is it that a thief or a robber or an expropriator is able to consecrate... Um, uh, an item that he gets, uh, or alternatively, um, he, he can designate his terum or give his mice. It can, he can only do it if it's his, and we're saying it has to be despair, but it's a problem because the uh, Gemara in um, um, in Kalim says it's, it's, it's it can't be, there, there's going to be a problem, either according to Rabbi Shimon and the Tanakama. There's no problem according to our Mishnah. So the Gemara provides a partial answer. And it basically says that you have to go with the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. And you have to say there are two different types of robber. One robber is an actual almost respected legal robber who's a tax collector. And the other one is an armed bandit. Either way, you're not going to get your money back. So that's when Rebbe's question comes. And it says, listen, it doesn't matter because whether you say it's a thief a thief is like a robber. And what have we established according to this? That Rebbe means that a thief is like a robber according to Rabbi Shimon. So let me just tell you what Rebbe's uh, thought is. Rebbe is saying the following. You can interpret it in two ways. Number one, that the thought of a thief does not render the heart susceptible to tumor as the rabbis hold in the case of a robber. Why? Uh, because um, as, far as, as far as that's concerned, that's the uh, one opinion. According to the other opinion, the thought of a thief does render them susceptible to tumor, because as Rabbi Shimon holds in the case of a robber. So we're saying it depends how you're holding. The bottom line is that it seems to emerge that according to Rebbe, it doesn't matter which way you hold because the victim of both a thief and a robber despairs of recovering his property. In whichever case, you just got to see which case works according to the appropriate application. 
And according to Rebbe, a thief or robber can consecrate what he stole as long as it's Yush. And that poses no difficulty to the opinion of rubber uh, at all, because you can use the either or factor. Now we're going to see that we need to have a bit of clarity as far as um, can you can you interpret it either way according to the opinion of Rebbe, or would it probably go closer to Rabbi Shimon? So Kevin's disappeared, Arthur's disappeared. Um, yeah, I know what's going on. No, I'm just saying. It does yeah, I am help. listening. I don't know why you thought my, I'm not tired at all. I said this off. No, no, I'll tell you why. There's a reflection bed. on your glasses, the way the light's bouncing. So what happens yeah. is when your head's slightly down because you're listening and concentrating, it looks as though when you can't see somebody's eyes that it's possible that it's closed. But because yeah, I know no, you've got like... sleeping problems, I thought to myself, you look too happy to be asleep. I guess when. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I'm actually at my happiest when I am yeah. sleeping. <laughs> it's it's unusual to catch me happy when I'm not sleeping, but when I'm not sleeping, it's right. You know? How's it, guys? Yeah. All right, yes, everyone. Uh, Danny still loves glasses, hey, and kippers. You have no idea, guys. How's you it, no idea. So, well, I... how's it? So, guys, we we we're not sure where Rebbe is finally going to go to, because you can interpret he either agrees with the Tanakama or he agrees with yeah, Rabbi Shimon. It can go according what? to his opinion. It really can. So, how we're working is as follows. We need to establish a proper path of interpretation. So the Gemara demonstrates how it was established at the end of the day that the correct interpretation of Rebbe's statement is that he actually goes with Rabbi Shimon. Now, just because Rebbe says that doesn't mean that that is halacha. The majority of the time, the halacha goes with the general rabbinic opinion, which is uh, the Tanakama. Not in all cases, but in most cases. But we want to know why Rebbe goes with Rabbi Shimon. Okay? Uh, because so far, uh, Rebbe said it doesn't matter whether it's a thief or robber or an expropriator. Either way, if there's despair, it affects acquisition, and therefore they can consecrate uh, designators to Ruma and Misa. All right. So that what what do we see from the text itself? Rebbe says a thief. I say Rebbe says a thief is like a robber. And they asked Rebbe, does he mean that a thief is like a robber according to the rabbis? And thus a thief does not acquire the hearts as the rabbis maintain. Now, Kevin, why? According to the rabbis, does a thief um, not acquire the hearts? In what? What's the case? In, in, when, he, when he just gen, just from general ceiling, you mean? No, but we used the case in Kalim, and we basically said that the thief uh, does not acquire the hearts. So even if he is intent is to take a heart and turn it into a placemat, he doesn't have the power to do so and therefore doesn't become a clee, a vessel, or a article of utility. And therefore, it's, even uh, if he drops it in, in a vet vessel of tumma, it doesn't acquire tumma. That's because there was no yush. Hang on one sec, there was no yush. That's what I was gonna say. The, no yush from the owner. Yes, but why not in the case of the thief? According to the rabbis, that's what I want to why, know. Why can't he just no? Why is, why, there no yush? why is there no yush from the victim? From the thief's point of view, no, no, no. From, from who? From whose side? If the victim doesn't give up hope, if he doesn't, then there despair, isn't yush. Then there isn't yush. Why is there not in the case of a th uh, thief? Was it uh, uh, the, the intention? Is it the the intention? Uh, he has the, the the owner hasn't decided what he wants to do with it yet. No, because a thief is somebody he knows, and a robber's not. So, um, is that correct? So uh, let's see, um, no, no. And well, it depends if you're talking about the case of the rabbis and Rabbi Shimon. Uh, because you said he's anything a thief and a robber. He said a, a thief is somebody. That he has a no, a robber's no, it's other around. Sorry, my mistake. Sorry, yeah, yeah. The robber's so, a guy. Sorry. All right, my so, sorry. Sorry. no problem. So, listen, perhaps it says a thief is like a robber, according to Rabbi Shimon, and thus he does acquire the hearts. 
So let's let's just let's just go back to our Mishnah because what it's doing is it's trying to go backwards and forwards between Kalim and our Mishnah to see if there's some sort of consensus. So I'm just going to go through this very quickly. If custom collectors took his donkey, etc., and gave him another donkey, or bandits took his garments, remember custom collectors known as a robber and bandits or a thief guys in our Mishnah took his garment and gave him another inferior garment, they are his, because the owners have despaired of retrieving them. Now, who is the ton of this Mishnah? It assumes that the owner despairs both in the case of the robber and the thief. Why? Because our Mishnah says there's despair in both cases. In the case of the thief, it uses the example of an uh, inferior and superior garment. In the case of a robber, it uses the case of an inferior superior donkey. Either way, there's despair in the case of the robber the to counsel with Rebbe. So if you say it's the rabbis who assume despair only in the case of a thief, the Mishnah's ruling about a robber is problematic. And if you say it's Rabbi Shimon who assumes despair only in the case of a robber, the Mishnah's ruling about a thief is problematic. Uh, now, the Gemara is going to demonstrate its proof that Rebbe follows the view of Rabbi Shimon. Okay. It's fine if you say that Rebbe means a thief is like a robber, according to Rabbi Shimon, because and the thief does acquire the hearts because who's the ton of this Mishnah? It's Rebbe, who assumes to spare in cases of both the thief and the robber. Because of this, our Mishnah rules that one who receives stolen goods from either thief or robber acquires them. And basically, uh, we say that they're different kinds of robbers. Now, uh, the bottom line of it is, is... Um, how can we attribute the Brisa to Rebbe? Um, we, we're saying that uh, apart from two different types of robbers, we can get to one particular bottom line. And this is what's going to solve all the inquiries, is that Rav Ashi said to Rabba, come learn a proof, for Rebbe himself taught Rabbi Shimon. Hang on a sec, Kevin bounced off. How's it, Kev? You back on? So you by the laptop. Uh, there's no, there's, there's load shedding. I get the laptop needs to be recharged. Sorry about that. No, there's no problem. And then so, there's the uh, inverter batteries. And there's so apologies for the noise. Yeah, there's no the battery problem. Needs to be so, so Kev, this will resolve why um, Rebbe goes with Rabbi Shimon. Okay, this is the bottom line. It sounds like Arthur's looking after ICU patient. We've heard that noise before. <laughs> yeah, put Kevin, uh, Kevin, put yourself on mute because it doesn't sound too good. Thank you. Okay, so Kevin, this is the bottom line. We wanted to know up until this point why Rebbe is holding by Rabbi Shimon. So according to Rav Ashi, who said to Rabbi, there's a very simple reason. Rabbi Shimon is Rebbe's son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a very, very good clue. Because uh, yeah, how do we know? He would be partial, yeah. <laughs> no, because Rabbi Shimon taught, learned this from his father. Not that Rebbe is partial to his son. Rabbi Shimon learned from his father, Rebbe. Because the Mitch, uh, we learned that Rebbe taught Rabbi Shimon, if you remember in a previous Mishnah, and this was in the 111th Duff, guys, that the Mishnah doesn't literally mean real property. Do you remember the context? It said, even if the stolen article wasn't physical property and was a cow with which the heir plows or donkey which he guards by walking behind it. The robber's heirs. When the robber dies, he leaves it to the uh, heirs. Guys, do you remember? He leaves it to his sons and etc. And we're saying that why is the heir liable to return the property? And remember, guys, we said there were two reasons. The one is that in his lifetime, he had a lien on his physical property uh, of a loan he took. He never paid it back. That's why the victim can take it back because the guy essentially robbed him by not paying back the debt. And then we learned this case where even if a guy's got a cow donkey, even though it's not fixed property, if people recognize it as their late father's who was a deadbeat and never paid back his debts, the sons are liable to return it in order to restore their father's honor. So the Gomorrah draws an inference from Rebbe's explanation. And the reason why Rebbe requires the heirs to return this articles 
is not because they have to return it. Okay, if there's not a lien on the property, especially if it's not movable property where there's no lien on movable property. The reason they're returning it, guys, is for their father's honor. And therefore, if they don't have to legally return it, it's because the victim despaired of retrieving the article from the robber or the um, or, or, or the debtor. And therefore, when the robber died or the deadbeat father died, they never paid back his debts. His heir acquired it through despair and a change of domain. Because remember, it went from the father's house to the son's house. And if you say, well, how can property transfer houses? It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to change a physical address. Only in the title deed it changes. It's sufficient. So firstly, the victim despaired. Secondly, there was a change of domain or a change of who owned the domain. And therefore, there's no reason to return it. It's, um, the only re especially if there's not a lien on the property and it's an actual robbery. The only reason that it's returned is for the honor. And therefore, we can assume despair took place. And therefore, display that took place with a change of domain means that this is a case of a thief or robber. It doesn't matter. Because either way, you can learn from this that Rebbe means a thief is like a robber, according to Rabbi Shimon. And therefore, we can use our Mishnah, which uses the term bandit as a thief and a tax collector as a robber, because he knows who it is, that took from him, even, even though he was legally allowed to do so. Well, it wasn't consensual. We assume that the owner despairs whether he was a victim of a thief or a robber. So the Gemara concludes, indeed, we can learn that Rabbi Shimon learned from his father, Rebbe, and we can learn a valid proof from this, that either way, with a thief or robber or expropriator, it means, bottom line, that when there's your ush, uh, the third party can take it. And it doesn't mean that it has to be declared as such. Okay. All right, guys, we, we're done. Oh. All right. Yeah. What, guys, what time tomorrow, Damon? Uh, we said yeah. 10 o'clock. 10? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, sure. have, a, have a fun night. Oh, thanks to that afterwards. And by the way, guys, thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Don't give up on me. Yeah, we, uh, right, we still no. want to go we out, Kevin. We don't actually invite you because we want you to come because we know you're not going to come anyway. So we just invite <laughs> you. Just being honest. Just say, David, I'm having a